What's up guys, Carmine here, back again to talk about House of the Dragon Episode 5, and after watching it for a third time, I gotta say, this is the episode that made me a bit nervous for the show going forward, because as much as I enjoyed this episode, there were some decisions in it that even the most passionate fan can't argue against. Let's get into it. Before that, this video was brought to you by me. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and follow us on socials. All links are in the description below. So off the bat, I'll just say this. I enjoyed about 80 to 85% of the episode. The only problems I had with it were the very beginning and the very end. Everything in between was awesome. I love the trip to Driftmark, I love the scenes between Viserys and Corlys, Rhaenyra and Christian, Alicent Otto, and even Laris and Alicent. A lot of good moments between the characters. Hell, even the wedding, for the most part, was awesome until it went very weird, very Tarantino-esque, very quickly. But let's start with the beginning. Now you guys know me, I say it every time, I'll say it here. I love the lore stuff that we got. I love that we get to see House Royce, their castle in the background, that we get to see the Vale and all that cool stuff. But that felt very rushed. Damon coming back to cause his wife's quote-unquote accident felt so weird that I wonder if the scene was written in at the last moment. In fact, it was such a weird scene that I did something I normally don't do. I watched the behind the scenes on the episode and it confused me even more because it's quite clear his intention was to kill her, but showrunner Ryan Condal and the episode's director say that, and I quote, We don't know if Damon went there to kill her or not. Well, we do. Damon is a horrible person and it's quite clear that's what he went there to do. It just felt... Off. Especially for the character, because you think Damon would be more subtle about the whole thing. I don't know, I, I thought in the previews, I thought he'd use his dragon to scare her horse, and then she falls off it, because that's the clever, sneaky way to do it. But now he just shows up and kills her. Yeah. I'm assuming the dragon budget was all used up by the time they went back and put the scene in there. And by the way, for a show called House of the Dragon, we don't actually see that many dragons in there. They're kind of just in the background as set pieces, kind of. Now, before we get to the wedding shenanigans, let me just point out one thing that I noticed when I first saw the episode. And I mentioned it in the non-spoiler review as well, and I'll bring it up here. Westeros is a fairly bigoted society, but apparently not towards someone's skin tone. Because when the trailers for House of the Dragon drop, we got the scene constantly of the Valerians walking into the room that we got in this episode, and they always cut away to someone looking at them in disgust or like, you know, having a like a smirk on their face. And I was wondering the entire time, are they gonna show people being racist towards them? And well, nobody really was, and I find that kind of awesome. And I say that because we have seen moments of how intolerant Westeros society can be, but apparently only towards different cultures, not skin tone. For example, in Season 4, Episode 1, Oberyn's first appearance, a Lannister guard tells the brothel keeper to bring out a shaved goat and a bottle of olive oil, or when Sam's father freaks out about Gilly being a waddling. But nobody says any snide comments about the Valerians not being white people, and I don't know, I'm, I think I'm... I think I like that a lot. I'm, ple I'm pleasantly surprised that they were being treated like everyone else because normally you don't see this type of acceptance often from a story that takes place in medieval times. This is actually fairly progressive of a society that can be very barbaric on some issues. So yeah, props to the writers for how they handled this. But as for the wedding stuff, or as I call it, the Tarantino wedding, uh, yeah, I, I don't like how, how quickly everything escalated and how unnecessarily it went in that direction. And of course, we have to talk about Christian Cole. Now, I've seen many people discussing this, and the one thing I noticed was a lot of confusion and a lot of people calling him a simp, which is... Come on, like, what are you, 14? Really a simp? The way I see it is that this was handled very poorly, and I'll explain why. So, he feels incredibly guilty for breaking his vows, and the vows meant so much to him, apparently, that he was willing to set them aside for the woman he loved. Marrying her would have absolved him of that guilt, which has been clearly eating away at him. When Rhaenyra just wanted him as a side guy, then it, it pretty much shattered him. Like, what was this for? It meant so much to him, but she means even more than that, and anything less than marriage is not just simple rejection, it's an insult to his sense of honor, pride, and moral code. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to say morals. He has a twisted sense of, of morals, and, well, yeah, sure, but it doesn't stop it from being his moral code. Westerosi society is different than ours, and we can't really hold them to the same standards we hold ourselves. And yes, of course, that doesn't make it right, but that's just how they are, and that's how he sees it. But no, this is not me defending the character, nor is it me making excuses for him. It's me trying to understand the mindset. And here we come to the problem. It wasn't 
well established how much he values all of this. We've seen him tell Rhaenyra in a previous episode how much he appreciates what she's given him, you know, ever since she picked him to be Kingsguard, everything he has now is owed to her, and, you know, th that makes sense. This is a society, by the way, I'll be saying society a lot in this episode, and this video, this is a society where your worth is based on what you can immediately provide, and the man here can swing a sword very well, and that's his worth. I just wish this was better expanded upon in earlier episodes how much it all means to him. As for the beating of Joffrey Lonmouth, which once again, what annoys me the most is that he wasn't punished for it, and none of the Kingsguard, like, go to stop him. And why the hell wasn't he wearing his helmet? The only person not wearing the helmet was the Lord Commander, which, okay, he's the Lord Commander, but every other Kingsguard was wearing a helmet. There's just so much about the scene that was just annoying, but whatever. The whole thing, him beating Joffrey Lonmouth, this is a tale as old as time itself. It's a guy who doesn't know how to deal with his own emotions. That's basically it as well. He's a psycho, sure, but this is also a huge problem with toxic masculinity. And some people were saying how they thought it was done to protect the secret with Rhaenyra, but I don't think so. And shout out to my man Shay over on my Discord who hit the nail on the head by saying he did it because Sir Joffrey was equating himself to Kristen and he sees himself as above their homosexual tryst, not wanting to be relegated to Rhaenyra's whore. You see this sense of stubborn pride when he confesses to Alicent when he asks for a clean death. He either wants to be a virtuous Kingsguard or Rhaenyra's actual partner, not something in between, and Sir Joffrey's wheeling and dealing just made him snap. Yeah, I, I agree with this 110%. In the books, Kristen actually kills Joffrey during a tournament, and that would have made more sense considering it's actually legal and okay for death to occur during tournaments. But here, instead, it feels more like the showrunners wanted to keep the Game of Thrones tradition of having another crazy wedding where everything gets insane very quickly and in a brutal way. And I get that this is medieval times, but do we really need guts and gore every single time? And it seems kind of excessive for no real reason other than these people are just barbarian caveman disguised in fancy clothing, holding back murderous intent at every second. And it just, it, it gets too crazy too quickly and and it's not very well done. And before we wrap up, I think I'll say my favorite scene of the episode was probably Alicent walking into the hall, showing up late, which is such a douchey power move, and in the green dress. And of course, I got extra happy when we have Laris explaining the color green and how it relates to the high towers, you know, them calling their banners for war. The whole thing was such a power move on her part, and I'm really happy with how it was done. If anything, I just wish we could have gotten one more episode before the massive time skip so we could see the fallout of the whole situation. But guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave your thoughts down below because I will be doing a mid-season review and I may use some of your comments for that. But of course, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Insta, all that crap. But once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.